Ever find yourself like really wrestling with a tough problem and you just need a minute to let it, you know, marinate in your brain? Oh, yeah, for sure. Sometimes you got to give your brain a little space to work things out. Totally. So today's deep dive is all about whether we can make AI smarter in the same way. Like, can we make it better at solving problems by just giving it more time to think? That's a really interesting question. I mean, for a while now, the big focus in AI, especially with those large language models, the LLMs, has been all about making them bigger, more powerful, feeding them more data, you know? Yeah, like the whole bigger is always better kind of approach. Exactly. But the research we're looking at today, it takes a different angle. It's like, hold on, what if instead of just making these models bigger, we gave them more processing time, more time to actually chew on a problem, could that be the key to unlocking way better performance? So instead of just throwing more computing power at it, it's about making the AI a more efficient thinker, like working smarter, not harder. Yeah, you got it. It's kind of like the whole tortoise and the hare thing, but with artificial intelligence. I like it. So where does this research even begin? What's our source material today? Well, we're diving into a paper called, and get this, scaling LLM test time compute optimally can be more effective than scaling model parameters. Catchy title. Right. But it does kind of lay out the main idea, optimizing how much processing time AI uses instead of just making the model bigger. Okay, so making those LLMs, those fancy language models, smarter by basically giving them more time to process information. Exactly. Okay, I'm with you so far. Yeah. But how do you actually make AI think longer? And more importantly, how do you make sure it's actually using that time effectively? Well, that's the really cool part. The researchers explored two main strategies, two ways to make AI think more effectively. They call them search with verifiers and revisions. And these approaches, believe it or not, they actually have some pretty interesting human parallels. Okay, search with verifiers and revisions. Those sound kind of intense, like something out of a detective movie or something. So what's the deal with these strategies? Well, let's start with search with the verifiers. Yeah. Imagine you've got this LLM and you give it a bunch of assistants, right? Those are the verifiers. And each assistant's job is to double check the AI's work, like at every single step of solving the problem. So it's like having a whole team of experts making sure every calculation, every decision, all of it's legit. Exactly. It's all about giving the AI the ability to explore way more options, try out different paths, and hopefully find the very best answer. Makes sense. Yeah. So what about revisions? Does that mean the AI gets to like edit its own work? You got it. Think of it like when you're writing something, an email or whatever, you don't just send the first draft, do you? Definitely not, unless I want to get called out by my editor. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you go back, you read it again, you make changes, you polish it up. And with AI, it's kind of the same idea. The researchers, they actually train the AI to go through this whole revision process, you know, to learn from its mistakes and actually get better over time. Okay, so it's like giving the AI that red pen and saying, all right, go back and see what you can improve. I like it. But how does the AI actually know what to revise? Like, where do these revisions even come from? Right, so that's where these things called process-based reward models come in. PRMs for short. PRMs. Those sound kind of like, uh, I don't know, like some high-tech training regimen for AI. Yeah, imagine them as like these coaches you see in sports movies, the ones who are always watching the players, giving them feedback, helping them improve. Okay, so they're like the AI whispers. They're helping them reach their full potential. It's, exactly. It's not just about giving the AI more time. It's about making sure that time is being used in the best possible way. So it's all about efficiency, whether it's by checking every angle with those verifiers mm -hmm. or going back and refining its thinking with revisions. Gotcha. But uh, what did the researchers actually find? Like, mm. did one of these strategies actually work better than the other? So we've got these two strategies, right? like going broad, exploring every option, versus going deep, refining the thought process, which one actually came out on top? Well, that's where things get really interesting. It turns out there's no like one size fits all answer. The best strategy, it actually depends on how hard the problem is. Oh, so it's kind of like in real life, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just got to brainstorm, try a bunch of stuff, see what sticks. But then other times it's more about like really thinking through what you already know. Perfect analogy. When the AI was working on easier problems, you know, things it was already pretty decent at. The revision strategy, that whole refining thing, that worked best. Like the answer was already in there somewhere. It just needed a little polishing. But I'm guessing with those really tough problems, that's where the search with verifiers strategy 
like having that whole team of AI assistants, that's where they really shined. Exactly. It's like imagine some crazy complex math problem that even humans would struggle with. In those cases, having all those AI assistants working on different approaches at the same time, that turned out to be way more effective. Yeah, because when you're dealing with something that intense, you need all the brain power or I guess processing power you can get. Totally. And the paper, it even has this great example. They gave the AI this task of converting numbers between different bases, like from our normal decimal system to binary, the way computers think. Oh, yeah. I remember struggling with that back in my computer science days. <laughs> Not my proudest moment. Well, the funny thing is the LLM, it kind of struggled with it at first, too. But here's the kicker. After a few revisions, it actually figured it out. It was like watching it learn in real time, you know? Wow. So by just giving it the space to work through the problem, try different things, it was able to master something that totally stumped it at first. That's wild. It is pretty amazing. And it leads to what I think is the most exciting part of this whole thing. This idea of, get this, compute optimal scaling. Compute optimal <laughs> scaling. All right, you have to break that one down for me. It's actually pretty simple. Picture like a really good detective working a case, right? Sometimes they need to go out, gather more clues, talk to more witnesses. That's kind of like that search strategy. Okay. But then other times, the key to cracking the case, it's all about really studying the evidence they already have, you know, putting the pieces together. And that's more like the revision strategy. So compute optimal AI. It's like a super detective who just instinctively knows when to go looking for more information right. and when to like really zoom in on what they've already got. Exactly. And here's the crazy part. The researchers found that by using this compute optimal approach, letting the AI kind of adapt its strategy based on the problem, they actually got way better results than just throwing more processing power at the problem. So they actually made the AI smarter, not just faster. Pretty cool. <laughs> totally. And get this, in some cases, this compute optimal approach, it actually matched the performance of a model that was 14 times bigger. And it did it all while using way less processing power. Wow. That's like a total game changer. Imagine what we could do if we could get that kind of efficiency out of AI across the board. Right. It's a pretty exciting thought, and it really challenges the way a lot of people are thinking about AI right now, this whole idea that bigger is always better. This research suggests that we might be able to do way more by focusing on how AI uses its resources, not just how much it has. Like working smarter, not harder, but for AI. I yeah. love it. Exactly. And, you know, th this research, it really opens up some really cool possibilities. Like, imagine a future where we have super powerful AI that can run on, like, our phones, our laptops, and it can handle all these complex problems without needing massive data centers and tons of energy. Yeah, that would be amazing. A future where AI is more powerful, more accessible, and even like better for the planet. It's a lot to think about. It is, and it all starts with you know rethinking our approach to AI. It's not just about size anymore. It's about making AI think smarter, not just harder. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Huge thanks to our expert for, well, being an expert, and to you, our amazing listeners. If you want to learn more about this whole compute optimal AI thing, we've got a link to the full research paper in the show notes. Until next time, stay curious, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to unlock the next AI breakthrough.